gentlemen, welcome back to Simon Reacts. Today, myself, Harry, and Vic are looking at ancient objects and how they were used. I have no idea Ooh. what that means. Very interesting. Is this called anthropology? Is that what this is called? Have you're I made asking that the wrong, You're asking yeah, the you. wrong guy, Vic. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <that. laughs> yeah, Josh and Toby aren't here. We have no idea. It's, anthropology yeah, no. is a, it's a UK clothing company, mate. <laughs> no, <it's>, <laughs> <laughs> I'm back in my office. Anthropology is the scientific study of humanity concerned with human behavior, biology, culture, and society. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> learn something new every day. Look, it's a good day. If you learn something, each day, you're on a good track. Let's get it. Me to the anti-masturbation device. Uh, ah, eight uh, examples of ancient objects uh, and how they were used. <laughs> this is taking a sudden twist. Bro, what with malfunctions? You're in the mud. Right. <laughs> Number eight, the Urumi. When a sword wasn't dangerous enough, history went and created the Urumi, a sword whip that can be flung around and deeply cut those it attacks. What? Unfortunately, the weapon can also easily cause injury to the users themselves, and it is considered one of the most difficult weapons to master. What? Even stopping or the changing direction belt. of the blade whips is considered so advanced, that's, that's got a blade and on the users end of it. must become yeah. masters of momentum. It is made up of a covered sword handle Ooh. and whip-like tendrils that are covered in flexible and insanely sharp steel. First invented in Kerala, one of the states of South India, it is an essential part of their ancient martial art, Kala Bro, Ripayatu. You'd be, mate, you'd be fuming if you go to a uh, uh, battle with a knife and this guy rocks up with this fucking... <laughs> you wave it around and I can't stick. come near him. Like, what yeah. do you do? Oldest recorded martial arts at over 2,000 years old. They're not even fighting Due to the other. danger of trying to use a sword whip as a standard weapon, its use is usually taught last within the martial art program. When not in use, the blade is often wrapped around the user like the a belt, making it both deadly <laughs> and fashionable. Despite the weapon and martial art Wait, nearly dying out, just they used a 20th it as a belt. century revival brought back interest. I don't know. Right, Multi-purpose, bro. You just, just bust it out if you need it. Making it both deadly and fashionable. Oh, all right. It is usually yeah. taught last yeah. within the martial art program. When not in use, the blade is often wrapped around the user like a belt, making oh, yeah, it both man. deadly Smart. and fashionable. Smart. Who needs a holster? Despite the weapon and martial art nearly dying out, a 20th century revival brought back interest to the Urumi, and many ceremonial displays are still performed around the world. In fact, other countries such as Sri Lanka have their own versions of the weapon. This version, however, takes it one step further and introduces more blades and even dual wielding. <laughs> this guy's a, a Terminator, man. He's going to be able to get everyone. The Rumi would be the last thing you would want to see on the battlefield. Number seven, the icebox. A famous device from the early 20th century, the icebox was used Just before the invention of the modern refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. It was basically a box, usually made of wood and lined with things such as cork or straw, in order to keep the cold in. A large block of ice was then put in the top compartment, yeah. which would cool the air in the lower That's compartment where food yeah. and drinks were stored. But the melted ice would have to be emptied out and replaced with fresh ice. The ice That's man long. was the Just person who was paid to deliver fresh the ice, ice to man. those ice boxes <laughs> and would come I'm by ice every man. so often to replace your ice. Back before we used chemicals to keep yeah, things fair cool, enough, ice the had to be harvested from cold locations and delivered to the hotter places that needed it. The ice box made home food That's storage... That's a good point, you know. Like, they what? couldn't freeze anything back then. Like, how would you yeah. freeze something? Yeah, like, you, they couldn't get, like, fruit from different countries. Like, stuff like that. Like, so this mental. ice man has to get ice. Where's he getting his ice from? Cold places. If you deli <laughs> yeah, but like, 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 so say I'm in London. <laughs> You do raise a really good point there. What do you mean? He yeah, goes to cold places. Put me back in my office, I'll find out. He goes to cold <laughs> places and then he delivers it to the hot place. Yeah, but where? You say it's London. It's, it's, you're London in the summer. Where's this man on his horse and cart getting this ice from? Here we go. Uh, um, Scotland. So, here we go. I've got it. I've got it here. So, ice was uh, harvested from um, frozen lakes and ponds and cut into bricks for transportation. But wait, there's no frozen lakes or ponds in the summer <laughs> in London. Just in go, England. You can just go keep going Scotland. north. Go yeah, just Scotland. keep going north and you'll find one eventually. There's no way there's... Fro there's even in the summer, there's not frozen lakes in Scotland. They to be fair, this looks like it was more of an American thing where they could go and find like frozen lakes and stuff. Mm. I, don't, I don't really think... Oh, well, I mean, he can just hold on to it as well. Like, he keeps it from the winter, keeps it in an ice box. And then transports it. Yeah, but he needs ice to keep it. Yeah, <laughs> like, how, how's he doing this, bro? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's one of the many, many mysteries of the past. Temperature control much easier in a time when it was still uncommon. It's going to tell in us fact, now, I the icebox yeah. has been credited with helping lower heat-related deaths in oh, large yeah. cities of the time. Many children look forward to seeing the icemen arrive on the ice wagon and would eat the ice chips that fell off as an early slushy treat in the summer. Similar, however, to the milkman, the iceman profession died off when more modern processes came about. In this case, electrical refrigeration. I bet it's fuming, With it mate. also died the popularity you know the of the icebox. About, like, though many vintage iceboxes still. the milkman still... and stuff like that. You know that typical. Mm. You know what no, I mean? Not no, not really. No, no, no not really. Oh, no, God, don't worry it. About it. Enlighten us. Don't worry about it. What are you trying to say? Your mum get up to the milkman sign. What are you trying to say? What I was going to say were they were they originally made about the ice man? I don't know. Now, are you insinuating that milkmen were were banging mums back in the nineteen twenties? No, icebox men were. Oh, okay. oh okay. ice men, yeah. <laughs> they were cold with it, you know, they were cold oh with it. God. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, the Santor. The ancient Santor or Santor is, is an old instrument with origins in Iran and much history in India. It is a stringed instrument that is played with little mallets in each hand. It has right. been used by many countries since the Middle Ages and is featured in many artworks of the time. Variations of its name mean 100 strings, but only the Indian version is known to actually have 100 strings. It's no, a hollow instrument us. and the strings are divided into 25 bridges of four strings each. Though fuck? widely used in its time, its popularity would eventually playing. decline until yeah, revival we have in the to mid 20th yeah. century. <laughs> its distinctive sound is now considered an important off. part of many works of classical Indian music and many of its players are respected hey, and renowned off, around no. the world. Number four. Oh, no, 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 no. We got you. We got you. Don't worry. We got you. We'll find some Santa. Santa tunes. Santa tunes. <laughs> oh, this guy's going sicko on him. One sec. Okay, yeah, we're at 347. One sec. Yeah, pull it in. Pull it in. Wait, no. I want to see someone playing it. I wanna, yeah, you'll see him play. You'll see him play. Oh, you see yeah, it? Yeah, oh, okay. It's just panning down, down, bro. He's about to come in. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. That's sick. Right, Why don't we still have this instrument? There's probably a million people watching this video. One of you can play the Santa. I want to hear Holiday by KSI. On a Santa. <laughs> Send it to us on Twitter. I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> I definitely don't. You know what? There probably will be. So if we can source someone, we can do that. I'll be, I'll be banging. All right, let's move that back would to the That would be video. iconic. <laughs> this actually proves that guitar players are frauds, by the way. <laughs> they have four strings. Yeah, what? Six strings. Number five, anti-masturbation devices. Oh, no. For men, no. Victorian times were not known for sexual liberty. In fact, many kinds of sexuality were considered impure, unnatural, and that they should be vigilantly controlled. Even nightly emissions were popularly considered a disease that needed to be controlled. Ooh. While this level of sexual healthy. control would lead to pro-sex countercultures, it also oh. created various devices intended to eliminate unrequired sex and most notably what? masturbation. Oh, how? What Take if you wear one of those, you're finished. Penis, which is terrifyingly as disturbing as it looks. <laughs> You've worried your son or hair is becoming a dirty little <laughs> 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 Intended as a cure to nocturnal emissions, <gasps> Dugum penis required serious dedication. What was, what is Users that? would place the claw device around their member. Any kind of arousal take place, the bear trap like device would make for an unpleasant reminder of social expectations what? of the time. So what? as it, as it expanded, it would be like the Dugum spiked. penis would soon no longer be used. Though many sexual subcultures still use anti-masturbation equipment oh, for other reasons, this is horrible. to this day. <laughs> Number wait, wait, four, you see that? Key. So you can't <laughs> hold you can't hold hands with God when you're masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. You, know, you only have to use one hand. Number four, the yeah. dental key. You've come a long mind. way from its horrible oh. meanings. Meet the dental key. Before the wonderful discovery of antibiotics, yeah, yeah, teeth infected back in the day, teeth were finished. pulled to try and stave off infection and death. Extracting teeth at the time was a Have painful had affair. Out? The claw end of the nah. dental key would be yeah, placed on was, like, ba like milk teeth, M milk teeth, M little ones, milk teeth, babby ones. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, bab babby teeth. Yeah. Look, first generation. Did they not fall out naturally, or did you? Did you were yours not falling out? Was that the issue? Nah, they weren't falling out. I'd have one, know. one baby teeth. Four adult teeth. It was four adult teeth. Yeah. Why? To, to have room for my teeth to move for braces. Well, at least it wasn't back in the day. True. Yeah. 
round the tooth in question. Then the whole device will be uh. rotated to try and wedge the tooth loose. Without any painkillers to speak of, this would very often tear the skin of the uh. mouth and crack the tooth I hate into it. tiny teeth, pieces. Teeth freak me out, you know. Sometimes uh. the force could even break the jaw. The insanely oh, brutal Lord method of tooth mercy. extraction was used for close to 100 Can't years just, like, knock and you was out. considered like, standard practice you for unfortunate victims. For yeah. all its flaws, though, it was still the preferred method as it was the fastest way to get a tooth out and wouldn't excessively prolong suffering. It would later be seceded by the forceps, and with the introduction of numbing agents, the process so was much more bearable for the period. modern yeah, patient bro. in yeah, need. Big time. Still, the dental key had a small resurgence with a more modern design in the 20th century. This is it's one ancient technology ago, like we can all be dollars. happy yeah. to see the end of. Number three, Abbott. Do you know what, though? We say we sit here and say, like, oh, so glad like we're in this generation, because back then, like, it was horrendous. Yeah. Do you not think that in like a hundred years time, like they're just gonna pull out a little like spray gun, like you've broken your leg, they're just gonna like spray it with like a can of something and it'll be fixed instantly, no pain. Like, <laughs> yeah. like yeah, surely. Imagine having to wear a cast. Oh, they yeah, they exactly. suffered so much. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, it's, better, it's still better now. I don't, oh, I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> and counterparts. This ancient device is more dated than some written numbers at well over 4,000 years old. One of the most basic counting and arithmetic devices, Look the like abacus donuts. has become a symbol of mathematics itself. First used in Mesopotamian cultures, it would later be used by ancient Egyptians and Greeks. The early counting tables used pebbles or other small materials and helped early cultures do basic math. In the second century BC, the Chinese developed a more advanced version called the Swan Pan. This could not only perform basic what? addition and subtraction, but more advanced calculations like multiplication and division. Jeez, In on. fact, even square root different. and cube root calculations what? could be made using How? this device. These kinds of devices are still used in many schools in the Eastern world to teach quick arithmetic. The Roman abacus was one of the most popular, with many in Europe using the device, especially little, merchants, little watch to one. deal with <laughs> currency. <laughs> many other cultures developed their own versions, such as the Japanese, Russians, and the Native Americans. It seems counting tables of some kind were a part of almost every country's early mathematical systems, even before they were standardized. Number two. Isn't it mad that, like, back then, we had, like, the brains just as powerful, but we had to use, like, those little things to, like, do our maths. Like, you just, like, move in little, little beads around to do a sum. And so now I you just get pen and paper. What did their brain power go into? Because, like, say you're a really smart guy nowadays. <laughs> I was just like, sick of teeth into. Back in the day, what was it? What, what, what would you do? Because you'd, like, you it's mind numb and just moving a couple of pebbles along. Like. <laughs> you raised a really good point. <laughs> I got a clue. I got a clue what they did. <laughs> Just bored out their mind all day. <laughs> <laughs> the sundial. Time is one of the most fundamental things we all seem to understand. Whether late or early, everything falls on a schedule. But how are you supposed to follow it if you don't have any clocks? Before clocks, ancient cultures used the position of the sun and other stars to get a sense of the passage of time so they could give a rough estimate of when to meet. When more accuracy was needed, the sundial was used. The sundial is the oldest known timekeeping device. It uses the position of the sun, but in a way that's much more precise to read. It works by using a dial with hours marked along the edges and a gnomon, a long extended part which is elevated and casts a shadow on the dial. As the sun moves across that the sky, the shadow moves yeah. too, with the is, dial how being they most decide, accurate at noon. Like, then it moves again as the sun descends. When is, when and they created yeah, portable ones for people shit. to carry around. <laughs> Obelisks could also be used to tell the time, and the Egyptians used the shadows to tell things like the summer and winter solstice. Due to the tilt of the earth, the gnomon has to align with the earth, otherwise within a week it will be inaccurate. It also must be positioned to the opposite direction from the south if you are in the north and vice versa. Yeah, it's too confusing. So yeah, it could be a little I'll, bit I'll confusing I'll if you up. didn't know exactly where you were <laughs> and that the earth was tilted. More accurate and modern sundials also have to account for things such as daylight savings time, with many artistic and intricate designs sometimes even showing zodiac positions and minutes. Still, when they were most used in ancient times, they helped early human cultures to quantify time and break the day into See, hours the as the Egyptians that. did. It would later uh, be succeeded really, by the famous like, hourglass, really which would lead eventually hand. to pendulum clocks 
quartz clocks and today's atomic clocks considered to be the most accurate. Still, many sundials are still used as functional art in many places around the world and are appreciated for their timeless quality. Number one, Line the number tonsil one. guillotine. Just uh, tonsil ah! 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 Like the ah! guillotine, it actually would have been much easier on the doctor. Before the invention of this device and use of anesthetic, tonsil removal was done by hand. The obviously injured patient would instinctively react and would very often bite down on the doctor working on him. In a world without antibiotics, anything infected would have to be removed to prevent death, and the tonsils were no exception. So this kind of procedure would have been quite common. The tonsil guillotine would surround the tonsils, slice them off, and the doctor wouldn't risk being bitten. Still, although it was technically oh, an advancement agony, and a bro. popular method, it could oh. sometimes cause heavy bleeding in patients. It was replaced by more modern equipment, and with antibiotics and anesthesia, the whole process became much more user-friendly. Just another Someone reminder that things that, weren't actually, always better in the good old days. <laughs> yeah, he's been paid to just Thanks take for watching. Off. Are there Stop any friends. other interesting <laughs> ancient objects that you know oh, of? If I, give you, if I give you a million pounds, no, yeah. two million pounds that you have to yeah. wear, the anti-masturbation thing for a month. Absolutely not. I, I, I almost think I would. Because <laughs> it's not. It doesn't clamp down on it. It just. It's just if you get erect, it, it um, it, it stops. It you'll just go down immediately because it's gonna be hurting. <laughs> I don't know actually because what if you can't you can't help it. That's I don't know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Can I have a kind of trial it for a day and then? <laughs> yeah, then, I'll, then, I'll then start I'll trying to source it. I'll, I'll, you get a free trial. I'll free start trial. my fundraising and sourcing of the equipment, and then we'll, we'll go from there. <laughs> All right, nice one. All right, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. <laughs>